Welcome to Learn Commerce PU Online Classes. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe our YouTube channel for all the updates. Hello everyone, welcome to second PUC statistics online classes. In this video, we are going to discuss what is normal distribution, what are the properties of normal distribution and what is the definition of normal distribution. Normal distribution is most common and most important of all the probable distribution. Let us get start. Okay, now in the previous section, we had discussed about what is discrete random variable, what is continuous random variable and what is probability mass function and what is probability density function. Okay, now for discrete data we can point towards exact probability of an event. For example, probability of obtaining head when tossing a coin, fair coin. We know that we can write it as P of H and this is equal to it takes the value 0.5. See, this takes exact probability value. Okay, now but for continuous data, we cannot point towards exact probability of an event. Therefore, we can estimate frequency curve under the probability distribution. Uh, Let us understand with help of an example. Okay, see, here I, here I took heights of person in centimeter and number of persons. See, here the first observation that is 140 to 150, here uh, 140 centimeter to 150 centimeter, here number of persons are 2. So, it means 2 persons height lies between 140 centimeter to 150 centimeter. We do not know the exact height of these 2 persons. Similarly, the remaining values. Okay, now I will plot these values on the graph. Here, x axis along with x axis along with heights of person and y axis along with the number of persons and I will take here 1 centimeter is equal to 10 units. See here observation starts from 140. So, I here I will start from 140, 150, 160, 170, 180 and 190. Okay. Now, here y axis along with the number of persons. So, higher I will take 1 centimeter is equal to 5 units that is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 like that. Okay. Now, for this observation I will plot histogram. See here the first observation is 140 to 150. So, here number of persons are 2. So, here 140 to 150 number of persons 2. So, this is histogram we have to draw like this. Okay, this is value 2 here. Okay, next, here 150 to 160. So, 150 to 160, number of persons 15. So, 15 is here. So, we have to draw like this, box plot like this. Okay, next, 160 to 170, that is 19, number of persons 19. So, 160 to 170, number of persons 19. So, it comes here. Next, 170 to 180, the number of persons 16. So, 16 comes here. So, this is like this. Next, 180 to 190, number of persons 3. So, here the value is 190 to 190 here. Uh, I think 3 comes here. So, this is like this. Okay, this is histogram. Using this histogram, we can draw frequency curve. Now, how to draw frequency curve that we discussed in the first year. So, first we have to point midpoint of horizontal lines like this, upper horizontal lines like this. After that, join these points by smooth curve like this. Okay, this is frequency curve or normal curve. Okay, now just forget about histogram. Let us talk about normal curve. Okay, normal curve is bell shaped. Bell shaped. Okay, now what are the properties of normal distribution? 
Okay, normal the range of normal distribution is minus infinity to plus infinity. It means normal the range of normal distribution is uncountable. For example, heights of person, heights of height of persons. Next, marks obtained by students. Next, uh, income of persons. These are the best example for normal distribution. Now, this curve is symmetric about mean. Here, mean is denoted by mu. Okay, and here mean, median, mode are equal. Next, the area of this curve is equal to 1. It means the right part of mu is equal to 0 0.5 and left part of mu is equal to 0 0.5. Next, the curve is asymptotic to x-axis. It means this curve is touch, approaches nearer and nearer to x-axis but it never touches to x axis ok now see here if I can here if I consider this as mu from this point to this point some deviation we can observe ok this we uh, this be a variation we can observe deviation we can observe what is deviation deviation in the sense variations of data ok now uh, deviation in the sense standard deviation we know the standard deviation is denoted by sigma ok now from this point to this point the various deviation of this curve we can write it as mu plus sigma ok now the if I move one step left of mu this is mu minus sigma ok now if I move one right of mu plus sigma then I can write it as mu plus 2 sigma and this is mu plus 3 sigma. Similarly, here I can write mu minus 2 sigma and this is mu minus 3 sigma. See the area of mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma is 1 sigma limit and then area of mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus 2 sigma that is 2 sigma limit then area of three, uh, mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma this is 3 sigma limit then area property of 1 sigma limit that is this one area property of 1 sigma limits or mu minus one sigma to mu plus sigma this is 0 0.6826 or we can say it as 68.26 percent ok next the area property of 2 sigma limit that is here to here that is 0 0.9544 or we can say it as 0 95.44 percent Next, then area limit, area of 3 sigma limit is here to here that is 0 0.99474 or we can say it as 99.74 percent. Okay, now the remaining places, here's remaining places are there, no, that is some exceptional cases 0 0.3 percent observations lies outside outside of the 3 sigma limits otherwise all the observations lies inside the 3 sigma limits ok next we know the formula of sigma that is standard deviation of square root of summation xi square divided by n minus summation xi by n whole square like that we know the formula of quartal deviation and mean deviation ok here quartal deviation formula q3 minus 1 sorry q3 minus q1 divided by 2 like that mean deviation formula for mean in ungrouped um, group data formula is summation x minus x bar divided by n ok now if, uh, in normal distribution we can easily calculate sigma if we know the sigma we can easily calculate quartal deviation and mean deviation ok here quartal deviation is 2 by 3 sigma and mean deviation is 4 by 5 sigma ok next 
using normal distribution we can calculate odd moment and even moment yes what are the odd moments odd moments are mu 1 mu 3 mu 5 so on okay here in normal distribution odd moments are equal to zero that is mu 1 is equal to mu 3 is equal to mu 5 is equal to so on is equal to zero okay in normal distribution odd moments are equal to zero okay now how to calculate even moments in normal distribution okay to calculate even moments in normal distribution we using the formula that is mu 2r is equal to 2r minus 1 into sigma power 2r here r takes the value that is r is equal to 1 2 3 4 okay now if i substitute in the place r is equal to 1 then formula is mu 2 into 1 is equal to 2 into 1 minus 1 into sigma 2 into 1 see here mu 2 into 1 is 2 so we can write it as mu 2 see here mu 2 is even moment okay this is equal to 2 into 1 that is 2 2 minus 1 is 1 1 into sigma we can write it as sigma only so sigma to the power 2 into 1 is 2 so the first even moment is that is mu 2 is equal to sigma 2 okay next if i substitute in the place r r is equal to 2 that we can write mu 2 into 2 is equal to 2 into 2 minus 1 into sigma 2 into 2 see here mu 2 into 2 that is 4 so we can write it as mu 4 so see mu 4 is even moment so even mu 4 is equal to 2 into 2 that is 4 4 minus 1 into sigma 2 into 2 that is 4 see 4 minus 1 that is 3 3 into sigma to the power 4 so, so the second even moment that is mu 4 is equal to 3 sigma 4 okay these are so like that we can calculate the remaining even moments okay next uh, we know that quartal deviation that is q1 q2 and q3 okay and one more thing we know that q2 is median so here first quartile and third quartile equi distance from the median so here q1 takes the value mu is equal to sigma uh, sorry mu is equal to, sorry q1 is equal to mu minus 0.6745 into mu i will write here that is q1 is equal to mu minus 0.6745 into sigma or we can write uh, this is q1 we can write up uh, lower quartile then what is q3 q3 also known as upper quartile that we can write q3 is equal to mu plus 0.6745 sigma and okay here i told mean median mode are equal so it has only one model so it is unimodal and it is mesocartic okay now here we calculated mu mu sigma mu sigma mu sigma so what is the parameter of normal distribution okay here parameter of normal distribution is mu and sigma mu and sigma okay now these are the important properties of normal distribution okay now what is the definition of normal distribution yes the definition of normal distribution is if x is continuous random variable
with probability density function yes we know that probability density function is denoted by f of x so this f of x is equal to 1 by sigma into square root of 2 pi into e to the power minus 1 by 2 into x minus mu divided by sigma whole square okay now here x takes the value minus infinity to plus infinity like this minus infinity to plus infinity here sigma is always positive then x is continuous variant and the distribute x is distribution of normal normal distribution x is distribution is called normal distribution Okay, this is the definition of normal distribution. Thank you for watching this video.